first set of ratios that we're going to cover are known as liquidity measurement ratios. Liquidity measurement ratios are ratios that attempt to measure a company's ability to pay off its short-term debt obligations if they were to come due. These measures do this by comparing a company's most liquid assets to its short-term liabilities. In general, the more current assets a company has relative to its short-term liabilities, the more likely it would be able to pay off its short-term liabilities if they were to come due. The liquidity measurement ratios that we're going to cover are the current ratio, the quick ratio, the cash ratio, and the cash conversion cycle. The biggest difference among these ratios is the types of assets used, with some ratios being more conservative than others. The first ratio we're going to cover is the liquidity ratio, called the current ratio. The current ratio is a ratio used to determine how well a company could pay off its short-term liabilities with its short-term or current assets. Current assets are cash and other assets that can easily be converted into cash within 12 months. Since current assets can quickly be converted to cash, if a company was required to pay off all of its current obligations, it should be able to convert all current assets into cash in order to meet its short-term obligations. The current ratio can be defined as all current assets divided by all current liabilities. The current ratio above 1 is usually considered good and anything below 1 is a signal that there may be financial problems on the horizon. Generally, the higher the ratio the better, however this may not always be the case. A company could be very conservative by keeping most of its assets liquid in the form of cash. Although cash is important, a company could become so conservative that it does not take advantage of investment opportunities that would require the use of cash. A company could continue to pile up cash, therefore propping up its current ratio, but this would not be good for the growth and profitability of the company since it would be missing out on profitable investments. Conversely, if a company becomes too aggressive and has a low current ratio, it may not be able to tap into low interest funds by borrowing from banks. This is because banks love to analyze potential borrowers by looking at ratios. By keeping the liquidity ratio, such as the current ratio, high, companies are able to tap into low cost borrowing from banks and other lenders. Another important thing to consider here is that the current ratio uses all current assets. This includes cash and cash equivalents, marketable securities, accounts receivable, inventories, and other current assets. In theory, these assets can all easily be converted into cash. However, in reality, this isn't always true. For example, the value of inventory reported on the balance sheet might not be accurate, especially if the company's inventory consists of items that nobody wants. If a company has inventory that is not in demand, they may have to sell it off at huge discounts in order to convert it into cash within a short period of time. Now let's go ahead and calculate the current ratio for Pier 1 and Bed Bath & Beyond and then compare them to each other. The first thing that we need to do is pull up the latest annual report for Pier 1 and Bed Bath & Beyond. The annual report is also known as a 10K filing and is required by the SEC for all publicly traded companies. We can find the annual report for these companies on their company website or on the SEC's website. Here we have the balance sheet for Pier 1, which shows that Pier 1's fiscal year ends on February 25th of each year. We are going to be looking at the amounts reported for fiscal year ending on February 25th, 2012. These statements are reported in thousands. As you can see, Pier 1 reported total current assets of $650,314,000 and total current liabilities of $245,388,000. Therefore, the current ratio for Pier 1 is $650,314,000 divided by $245,388 with the ratio of 2.65. Pier 1's current ratio is 2.65. This can be expressed in times or in dollars. It simply states that Pier 1 has 2.65 times current assets as it does current liabilities. You could also say that for every dollar that Pier 1 has in current liabilities, it has $2.65 in current assets. Now let's look at Bed Bath & Beyond's balance sheet to calculate their current ratio. We also got Bed Bath & Beyond's balance sheet from their company website and it is also reported in thousands. 
The first thing that stands out is that Bed Bath & Beyond is a much larger company. However, they are still both retail stores with a similar focus. Bed Bath & Beyond has current assets of $4,142,939,000 and current liabilities of $1,339,000,000. $130,000. Therefore, the current ratio of Bed Bath & Beyond is $4,142,939,000 divided by $1,339,130,000 with a ratio of 3.09. Bed Bath & Beyond's current ratio is 3.09, which is higher than Pier 1's current ratio. Bed Bath & Beyond has $3.09 in current assets for every dollar it has in current liabilities. According to this, Bed Bath & Beyond is in much better financial shape and is of relatively low risk to both investors and lenders. Why does Bed Bath & Beyond have a higher current ratio than Pier 1? There could be many factors that we can't figure out by simply looking at the current ratio. We would have to look at the history of both companies, trends, and other ratios before we could come to a conclusion that Bed Bath & Beyond is the better company. For example, maybe Pier 1 was on the brink of bankruptcy, but has made a huge turnaround. This would mean that more than likely the stock is selling at a discount, therefore offering you a higher return. However, it could also mean that Pier 1 doesn't manage its money as well as Bed Bath & Beyond does, so there is more risk involved. Another factor could be that Pier 1 is more aggressive in its investing. Maybe it has a lot of investment opportunities which will be good for the investors so it is putting its cash to use instead of sitting on it. The point being made here is that just because a company has a higher current ratio does not always mean that it is a better investment. There are many weaknesses in the current ratio, many of which we have already explained. Even though a company has a higher current ratio, it doesn't always mean it's the most liquid. This is because, as explained before, the current ratio includes accounts other than simply cash. Two companies could have the same current ratio, but actually vary greatly in liquidity. For example, if two companies, Company A and Company B, both had a current ratio of 1.5, except Company A's current assets consisted of mostly cash, while Company B's current assets consisted of mainly inventory and accounts receivable, then Company A would be very liquid, while Company B might have trouble meeting its obligations, especially if it takes them longer to collect on accounts receivable than Company A. There are other liquidity ratios such as the quick ratio and the cash ratio that attempt to find a more accurate measure of a company's liquidity.